Welcome to the AI for Good Global Summit, and I'm pleased to have with me a regular contributor, Wendell Wallach, who's now with the Carnegie Council for Ethics in International Affairs. Right. Now, you've been to a few of these summits that we've had here. Going back to the first one. And things have moved on. We're now talking a lot about, you know, not AI for Good so much as governance, rules, regulations. Tell me about that. Yes, this is what's dramatic. This is the first Carnegie, at the first, excuse me, at the first uh, AI for Good, there were probably three of us who even said that there were problems that had to be addressed. People were so enthusiastic. And here we are at this moment in history when the release of chat GPT and of generative AI more broadly has, I think, alerted to the public to all kinds of ways in which AI can destabilize um, nations, can exacerbate inequalities, can undermine human rights. So I and many others have been saying, this is the time when we need to act and put in place appropriate guardrails. And first and foremost, that has to happen on, happen on a national level, but it truly needs international governance. Because right now, because I just saw a newspaper article about it yesterday, I could post photos of me uh, on top of the five main mountains of the world through AI, and you would believe me. And you can do it in minutes. I mean, hopefully people will stop believing you when you do that. But my example of it is always the day before the next election, there will be videos of Joe Biden falling flat on its face. And who wants international stability determined by some fake video that somebody has published? Well, we hadn't thought about that. And so when you've been talking to people around here and you can raise these kind of examples, what do they say? Uh, they're getting it. They're, I mean, it's, this is not new for me. I've been pushing the global governance of AI and other emerging technologies for years because we're at a moment in history where they are remaking the world as much as climate change is and the two things are converging. But the good news is everybody's gotten it this time. The question is, are we going to be able to create a salt march moment like the Gandhian salt march that we change history, that through a few nudges at this moment we can change history, or are we going to lose the opportunity? Is the window going to close, and do we surrender the future to the corporations that are not, do not have appropriate safeguards in place and do not seem to be being held accountable for their actions? Well, you hit the nail on the head. How can you make anyone do that? Well, I mean, eventually you need, you need actual laws, but enforcement's going to be pretty difficult initially. We can start, though, with very firm ethical principles, which we already have with the UNESCO ethical principles. We can start with very specific standards that become domain-specific, and countries tell the corporations, if you are not following the UNESCO guidelines, the UNESCO ethical guidelines, or if you not bane these standards that are set by the IEEE, the World Health Organization, by a vast body of international groups that have high respect, we're not going to let you deploy your technology in our country. Okay, so looking forward from here, so we're at a historical moment. When do you think these guidelines could become internationally imposed? Well, well, I don't know about imposition. I think it ha it's there's soft law guidelines as opposed to hard enforceable. But I think they're already coming down. In other words, there are groups such as the IEEE, as, a, as an example, that are already formulating their guidelines. But what has not happened yet is that the governments are saying to the corporations or saying those who want to have access to the, the data of their citizens, that if you don't have transparency, if you don't follow this guideline that has been set in this particular field, then we don't want you in our country. We want to make sure that we're protecting the interests of our citizens and you don't get to dictate their future to them. So final thought, are you positive or not? I think we have this moment and um, it all depends upon what we do at this moment. I've actually been asking people at, uh, at meetings for years, are they positive or negative about the next 20 years? And interestingly enough, it's gone more negative, but 
the greatest group of people are those who are sitting on the edge who are saying it still could go either way. Mm. So we have this opportunity. Let's take it. Wendell Wallach, always great to talk to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you ever so much. And we have much more coming up on the AI for Good Global Summit right here, so stay tuned. Thank you.